Hello, and welcome to the Pillar of Fire Church service, brought to you live from the Pillar of Fire Church in Marion, Illinois. While we're waiting for service to start, please enjoy this music. Welcome to the Pillar of Fire Church service, brought to you live from the Pillar of Fire Church in Marion, Illinois. While we're waiting for service to start, please enjoy this music.
Hello, and welcome to the Pillar of Fire Church service, brought to you live from the Pillar of Fire Church in Marion, Illinois. While we're waiting for service to start, please enjoy this music. Well, welcome everybody, and uh, Tracy has a scripture for us today before we start. This comes from Psalm 92, and, and I happen to be reading from the um, Amplified Version of the Bible, and it says, it is good and a delightful thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises with musical accompaniment to your name, O Most High, to show forth your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness by night with an instrument of ten strings, and with the lute, and with the solemn sound of the lyre, parentheses, and electric pianos. <laughs> For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your works, and at the deeds of your hand I will joyfully sing. How great are your doings, O Lord. Your thoughts are so very deep. Amen. Amen. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name, and we just thank you for all you do for us and, and the places you've taken us and are leading us all the time. And we just know that you are, you are it, man. You are the most important thing. And we just uh, give you praise and thanksgiving right now as we come before you to give you our, give you our praise. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Mighty are you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. This is what the Spirit of God says to the church. When you go into battle, don't forget to send Judah first. There's so much power in that praise. Well, it can knock down a wall, or a dead it can raise. So send Judah first. Send Judah first. There's power in your praise. Since the ancient of days This is what the Spirit of the Lord says to the church When you go into battle Don't forget to send Judah first Don't you know that there's power In your praise Well it will knock down a wall And the dead it will raise Send Judah first, 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 send Judah first. They're the praising part of the family. They're the ones who bring the power. They're the ones who announce the Lord is coming. Well, send Judah first. I send Judah first. I send Judah first. I send Judah first. Yeah. Send them first to lead the way. Send Judah first. 
Send them up right there at the head of the line and watch the walls come tumbling down. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the walls that you are pulling down, the walls that the enemy has built. And we thank you, Lord, that you are giving us the strength with the sword in one hand to diligently work with the other to build the wall back that you desire to be around your people, a wall of defense, a wall of protection. Father, we break down the walls of the enemies to release the captives, and we pull them into the refuge of your strong tower, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord reigns. Hallelujah.
Jehovah, oh, 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 King of all kings, oh, 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 He is almighty, come, worship the King. the King. Come, worship the King. Splendor and majesty, power and authority are His from the beginning. His they are and Let's worship the King. 
grave is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God.
places like the mighty mountain Your justice is deeper than the sea Your priceless love was poured out on me You shed your blood and you died for me
that keep us constantly focusing inward on what's going on with us and what's going on with our families and all of that. Father, help us to look outward and trust what's going on with us to you and be looking for the opportunities that you have for us to minister out there. Father, that's what your body is for. It's not to come together and and just to come together in fellowship and have a good time. It's to hold each other accountable. It's to make each other strong, to to surround each other and, and help us get our armor on so that we can go out and take what you've already given us. You've already given us this world. You took it back from the enemy the day that you paid the price for our sins. And Lord, help us to occupy the way you would want us to occupy, Lord, with love, with joy, with triumphant joy, Father. I thank you, Lord, for this time together. I thank you, Lord, for the worship that you've you've accepted from our lips today in our hearts. You're so merciful, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for inhabiting our praises and allowing us to realize your presence. And we just give our hearts to you and minds to you, our wills to you, Father. Uh, before we receive our tithes and offerings, uh, Wanda had a song that she had in her heart that she just kind of wanted to sing for us. Well, for a long time now, the Lord has been with me. He's been with me through a lot of trials and tribulations. And I told the Lord, I said, I want to write you a song. I want to write you a love song so you know just how much I love you. Well, I quickly became we. It did. But the Lord gave me the words. He saw how much I loved him and how much we love him, and he give me the words. I just hope he lends me a voice so I don't sound like a screech owl. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, so majestic and true, precious Heavenly Father, how we love you. We go through trials and tribulations with you. We get love everlasting, kindness and caring, mercy and forgiveness, grace and compassion. When we praise you, Our hearts grow arms and reach out to you. 
Dear Heavenly Father, so majestic and true, Heavenly Father, how we love you. Amen. Am I still on? Yeah, I'm still on. Well, I'm going to turn it off, okay? Well, let's receive our tithes and offerings and uh, and uh, get ready. Because <laughs> I'm going to preach, sort of, kind of. Push that left button. There's a little button on the left there you got to push. It should go green. Nope. Must not have gone green. There you go. Okay, I want to pray over this offering that's been given from the heart from those who have, have placed it here. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this offering. Lord, I pray that you be with those who, who were able to give today, those who are not able to give. Lord, and bless this offering to be used in the manner that you wish it to be used. And Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the people that have come out today. And we, we give you all the honor and glory and praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, you can just leave it there. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Got to get unhooked from my setup here.
Okay, one, two, test, test, test. Am I kind of sort of there? Okay. I think I'm unhooked. I was unhooked until I let that out of there. I don't trust this stand. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. I, uh, I've been uh, mentioning to some of my friends in the Spreaker community that I was going to be preaching today, and they... I see them in the chat room, so I, I know they're floating about and maybe uh, say again, yeah, they're floating about in the cyber world. There's one guy I know of for sure that's in uh, Rhode Island and another guy that's in the UK, so hello, mate, over there in the UK, although that was more like somebody from Australia, I guess, anyway. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try and do this and see if I make any sense, but we'll, we'll see how it works out. Um, basically, <laughs> and Ernie says he's here, so <laughs> you're making me nervous, Ernie. All right, anyway, uh, the, uh, the stuff I want to talk about today is how much time is too much time for God. And uh, I, I know that there were times uh, in the past when we had uh, we had some pretty long services, and uh, and I got to thinking about that. And one of the uh, one of the young children that used to come here uh, that has moved away now said, uh, "Dad, are we going to Forever Church?" <clears throat> And, and I got to thinking about that, and, I, and, I'm, and, I, and I, I've heard a lot of people complain about time things, and, and, and I said, man, you know, how, how much time is too much time for the Lord? And I got thinking about, you know, what God did, you know, to, to start with. He, he made, the, made the world, you know, well, yeah, he did that in six days. And, uh, okay... And then I read somewhere where you know maybe a year is, is like you know a year or a day is like a thousand years or something like that you know so let's say you know even if he didn't do it in exactly six days maybe he did it in six thousand years but you know whatever whatever how he did it you know he took the time and he made the world and then he put all the stuff on the earth put us on the earth. You know, told us not to mess up. And we messed up, or at least Adam and Eve messed up. And that was the start of the mess up. And then, after Adam and Eve messed up, what happened? He took the time to work out a plan. Because, you know, once, once they messed up, they were separated from God. They were, they were doomed to die. You know, it took them 900 years to do it, but, you know, they, they were originally intended to go forever. And, the, I, you know, man as man was intended to be with God forever. But because they messed up and disobeyed what God said, you know, and, and because he had set the law in order, you know, he had to go by the word that he had spoken. You know, he said, you know, you can eat from any of these trees, but don't eat from that one. Because if you do, you know, you're going to, you know, you're, that, the day you do that, you're going to die. Now, they didn't specifically die on the ground that day, but they began to die, you know, in their physical bodies. They died spiritually. You know, to be dead spiritually, in my, in my mind, is to be separated from the Lord. And uh, so, you know, at that point, you know, they, they were, you know, when they started out, they were walking in the, in the garden with God. They were talking with him. He was hanging out. Hey, 
you know, I'm your, I'm your father. I'm your spiritual covering. I'm the, the Almighty, and I'm hanging with you guys. And then they deceived, you know, they, they broke the rules, then they deceived, they covered up, um, you know. <clears throat> At any rate, God took the time to devise a plan. Figured it out, set it in motion. When you look in the Old Testament, there are so many pieces and parts in the Old Testament that point to Jesus. You know, there's, there's just so much stuff. You know, even in the Jewish traditions, you know, I went to a Jewish Seder where they're uh, remembering the, you know, all the, all the things and they have the bitter herbs to remember something and they have this uh, bread that has stripes on it to remember something and, you know, and if you correlate all those pieces, you know, the bread with the stripes, you know, was Jesus, you know, and they break the bread, you know, during their thing, you know, well, Jesus took the stripes and, and, you know, he wasn't necessarily, he wasn't actually broken, broken, but, you know, he gave his body and what he said at, at the Last Supper is, I give my body, you know, this is my blood, this is my body that I give to you, give for you. But all this stuff got set into motion. You know, it took 4,000 years to get everything in place. The genealogies, all the, you know, if you look at all the different people, all the names that were named, that were given to people, <clears throat> that meant certain things. And you follow all that, you know, and you can trace, you know, they, they trace Jesus' lineage all the way back, uh, I forget how far it goes. It may go all the way back to the beginning. You know, so and so begat so and so. There was there was fourteen generations before this, and fourteen generations before that. I, I, what fourteen generations to Moses, maybe, and then fourteen generations before that. So, you know, God took the time to do all that. Uh, Sherry and I watched a, a video called "The Star of Bethlehem." And it was talking about the, uh, you know, what the what the wise men actually saw. And you know, there were signs in the heavens, unusual things going on in the heavens. And not necessarily this great big giant star, which a lot of you know a lot of people kind of discount anyway. But it, and if you get a chance to get a hold of that that video, it. He does a whole lot better job of explaining the Star of Bethlehem and, and what all was happening. But all these different signs, you know, this, this particular star was in this particular constellation, and, you know, all these things aligned in a certain way, and the, uh, you know, that alignment made the scholars of the day say, wait a minute, this is really weird. And then they started following all this, and, and I can't explain it, but, um, but the fact is that a certain star was in a certain place on the day that Jesus was born. Um, it led to another place during part of his ministry. When he died, the star was in another, you know, this, the alignment of all these things were in a, a specific place. And the whole point of it is, is that everything was orchestrated. So, you know, the timing was just amazing. Well, you know, God does that kind of stuff. So, you know, not only did he, you know, deal with all the people that he had to deal with to get the, the lineage the way it was, to make sure that the right people ended up in the right spot so that Jesus could be born to Joseph and Mary, you know, he, point, he put stuff in the sky so that the wise men could figure out that something was weird and, and you know, and they needed to, to, you know, go check him out, you know. But he set this whole plan in order, the day, I'm sure the day that, that Adam and Eve messed up, okay. It took 4,000 years so that we could have our Savior. And then 
you know, Jesus went and he preached and he, you know, he took the time. He, you know, he even went to the little kids, you know, to, to make sure that they got the message. Yes, the, the older people got the message and he preached some really good stuff. And I, and I kind of want to, uh, the, the interesting thing I, I found when I was just kind of looking at all this stuff, <clears throat> is that Jesus' first sermon, or at least the, the first big sermon that you ever hear about, is the Sermon on the Mount. And that's when he, uh, it says, uh, Matthew 4, 17 says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness, all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought in him all the sick people that were taken with diverse diseases. So he starts his, starts his ministry, and he starts preaching, and then he goes and finds some guys and says, Hey, come on. And they took the time to drop their nets and follow Jesus. You know, I mean, that was their livelihood. Yet here comes this guy, you know, at, that at this point was just a, a good speaker. But he said, follow me, and they did. No questions, evidently. They just kind of dropped everything and went. And uh, and then Jesus, you know, got all this fame, evidently, because he was preaching so good. And in Matthew 5, he, uh, when he saw the multitudes, he went up to a mountain. And when he was set, when he was set, what did he do? He goes up to the mountain, and when he was set, he took some time. I think he talked to his dad and said, hey, I've, I've got these multitudes down here. What do I need to tell them? You know, he, he took some time. When he was set, he called his, uh, let's see here. Yeah, when he was set, his disciples came to him and he opened his mouth and taught them <clears throat> and said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It's henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and, give, and it gives light to all that are in the house. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He was telling his disciples to... Uh, Take some time. Let their light shine before men. 
You know, if, if you have a light, you don't want to hide that light. You know, if you're stumbling in the dark and, you know, you're down in the basement, you know, and it's dark at night and your power goes out and you're wanting to find a flashlight or your fuse box or something, you know, that's, that's a pretty dangerous place to be without a light. And that's the way this world is. It's a pretty dangerous place to be if we don't, if we don't have some kind of guidance to, uh, to go on. And he, he told them about uh, loving your enemies. And if, uh, if, if somebody hits you, turn the other cheek. You know, don't... You know, if somebody goes after you uh, and wants your coat, give them your cloak. Uh, You've heard it said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. So when you pray for those people that hate you and despitefully use you, you can be called a child of that Father that took the time to work out everything that needed to be worked out so that he could bring his son and redeem ourselves back to him. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages. This is Matthew 9, 35. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest." Take some time. Pray to the Lord that you can go into his harvest. You know, how how much time do we mess around? You know? And I'm I'm guilty of this big, 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 big time. You know, I mean I, I go to work. You know, I have to be leaving for work at 7 o'clock in the morning. I work 10 hours a day, Monday through Thursday. And then when I get home, I'm usually pooped, you know. So I run in, fall into the bed, and lay there and watch TV for several hours. You know, Sherry's in working on her jewelry or something or flittering about doing laundry and... You know, she's busy doing that stuff, and I'm, I'm worn out. I just want to go to bed. And then I get up in the morning again. You know, a lot of times I stay up too late because the show I'm watching is, is really entertaining. And then I have trouble getting out of, out of bed in the morning, you know, and I'm pushing myself to get back to work. And, you know... Where is my time? Now, I kind of try and rationalize it that, you know, I work for a Christian television station, and they're preaching the gospel, and so, you know, hey, I'm I'm doing my part, you know, for the kingdom. You know, I got to get some credit because I'm keeping them on the air, you know, so that they they can put the message out. And that's okay, I guess, but, you know, how much time do I actually spend praying, talking to God? Yes, some, you know, to a certain extent I, you know, I give praises and worship to the Lord, but actually talking to Him. And I I read somewhere where uh, uh, Dr. Cho 
over in Korea who has like maybe the largest church in the world. It's got like a million members just in this, you know, it's, it's a church, and I think they've split off to, you know, four or five other churches. They have a lot of home meetings, all that kind of stuff. He started out with, I think, 300 people, and, and now he's got over a million people that are registered in his congregation. They, uh, in the main church, they hold seven uh, church services a day, and, you know, it's, it's a crazy amount of people. Um, some guy asked him, how much, how much time do you pray a day? You know, he, he, this, this guy said, that asked him said, I, you know, I only, have, I only have time to pray an hour a day. And uh, Dr. Cho said, well, I pray three hours a day. And the guy said, well, you know, how do you find the words to talk to God for three hours. You know, he says, I have enough trouble thinking of enough stuff to, to pray, to say, in an hour. And Dr. Cho says, well, you know, I spend an hour talking to, the God, to God, and then I spend two hours listening. You know, and that's something we may not think about in our, in our minds, is that when you talk to somebody you need to expect a response. You know, yeah, it may not be an open, you know, I am God and you will do this. No, maybe not. But I have been on the receiving end of, of God talking to me. I mean, there's, there's sometimes you just can't deny, you know, the thing that you understand, and it's hard to explain that kind of thing, but God does speak to us, you know. If nothing else, when you read the Bible, you know, I've, there was a, a guy that read the Bible and there was a scripture that said uh, he had gangrene in his, in his, in his feet. Or in his, one, of his feet, one of his feet, he had gangrene in his feet. And the doctor said, you, you know, I'm going to have to amputate that foot because it's gangrenous and, you know, it's going to kill you. And this guy was reading his Bible and there was a, there was a scripture that said, I will not suffer your foot to be taken. Now the actual context of the thing was that this, this army was, had a foothold in this place and God wasn't going to let, let them be overrun. He was going to hold them. But the guy read that scripture where it said, I will suffer not your foot to be taken. And he said, no, God told me my foot is not going to be taken. And, you know, the next day, of course, the gangrene miraculously was gone and the guy went home, you know. But, you know, when you hear God talk to you, it's because you were listening. It's because you took the time to listen. You know, there's, there's 168 hours in a week. And I got to thinking about, you know, we give our tithes and offerings, you know, so if we were going to tithe out of that week, that's 100, in 168 hours, that's 2 hours and 24 minutes. I don't remember if that's a day. That must be 2 hours and 24 minutes a day. If we were going to tithe, yeah, because it's 2 hours, yeah. Um, and then I said, well, you know, that's, let's, let's say that's not realistic because, you know, you're not awake 24 hours a day, okay? So then I figured, okay, I go to work at 7, I go to sleep at 11, so that gives me, you know, 8 hours of sleep time. So the actual result in time is 112 hours a week that you're awake. Now, if you tie that awake time, that would be 1 hour and 36 minutes a day. That's doable. Now, you know, and I'm, what I'm talking about is talking to God. You know, taking some time for the Lord, reach out to Him. Or reach out to a neighbor. Or, you know, think about spiritual things, you know. Most of the time during the day, man, I am so tied up and, and focused on, you know, some 
computer program that broke or some wire that somebody kicked out or you know some fiber optic cable that got cut in Tennessee that knocked us, our entire operation off the air you know I mean you know I am constantly and then when I get home you know a lot of times in the middle of the night I'm getting phone calls because we went off the air or you know or some some program was ready to be moved into our into our system you know because it had to be uh, forwarded to some other place that had to have it by 10 o'clock the next morning and if I don't get it done now it won't get done and you know there's all kinds of all kinds of stuff that jerks my mind from one way or the other or there's something in our culture that is making my attention you know taking my attention and holding it and not letting me pay more attention to the Lord and I'm and I'm guilty you know, guilty as, as anybody. So what I want to just kind of put in your head and put in your mind is that God took time to make the earth, took time to make us, took time to make a plan to get us back to him after, after our idiot foreparents didn't listen to him. You know, how, how much time did God deal with the children of Israel? You know, don't do this. And they did it. Oh, okay, all right, I'll forgive you. Okay, but don't do this. You know, don't build this idol. And they build an idol. And, you know, now, granted, they had to go through some pain. But God took the time, took the time to listen to Moses when, when he... You know, God wanted to just destroy those people. And Moses said, no, give me a minute, God. Just give me a minute. When, when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, Lot was, was over there. Oh, wait a minute, Lord. You know, give me a minute. Let, let me talk to you about this. You know, what if there's, you know, 100 people that are righteous? You know, and God took the time to listen to us. You know, let's take the time, you know, an hour and 36 minutes a day. Now, you don't have to sit for an hour and 36 minutes. Just put it in your mind when you get up in the morning. Hello, Lord. You know, maybe when you're having your lunch, you know. But, you know, find time for the Lord and find a place where you can meet Him. Um, when I was thinking about this today. When I first start, when we first started coming here to this building, I was worried because I wanted to put everything out here in the in the fellowship hall and have it in a room right outside the fellowship hall so I could throw stuff out real quick and throw stuff back real quick. When we first started coming here, it used to take me an hour and a half to two hours to set up. You know, I'd come in here right when church ended at noon and I'd start hooking stuff up. You know, and it took me a while to figure out how everything needed to go. But the more I did it, the more I did it. Today, you saw me, I came in, and in 20 to 25 minutes, I was ready to roll. And I think the same thing is true, is if we start really taking the time to search after the Lord and listen to the Lord, and get that two-way communications going and, and, you know, try and read some of, some of his Bible every day. You know, just little pieces here and there. You know, any feeding is going to be good. But the more you do it, the more adept at doing it you will be. There, I remember another preacher said, said man... I have got so much to do today, I'm going to have to change from my three-hour prayer to my five-hour prayer. I've got to pray five hours because I have so much to do. Rather than praying less and trying to get more done, he prayed more so that he could get more done. And I, I can't remember, that was a famous, famous preacher, I can't remember who it was, I tried to find that, that reference, but I, I know that was something that was said. So anyway, my admonition to you, and, and you are so glad I didn't read all of this scripture I had, uh, is that you find time. You know, God took the time for us. Let's take the time 
to find God and listen to what he has to say to us. So, that's my... And there's never too much time for the Lord. You know... Oh, one of the, okay, I got I got to I got to do a caveat on the end of this. There was a scripture in uh, uh, Acts twenty. I got I got to do that one. You know, just just because of of people whining about how long the uh, the service might be. Uh, Acts Acts twenty. And I think it's verse 9. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So Paul's out preaching. Okay. And uh, here's Acts 20, uh, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow. Okay. So they were breaking bread. So I, okay, let's say it's lunchtime. They're breaking bread. Okay, it's the first day of the week, Sunday, and Paul comes to preach. Now, my Adventist friends would have trouble with that because they say you've got to preach on Saturday. But anyway, we won't go there. Anyway, Paul's preaching to him. He's getting ready to depart because he's got to leave. And he continued his speech until midnight. He started preaching, maybe at lunch, preached till midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber when they were all gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him and said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. And then when he was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till daybreak, so he departed. So, you know, count yourselves lucky that you don't have a Paul hanging around here. You know, he preached until midnight, until this guy fell out of the window, you know, and, and cracked open. And then he laid on him, you know, he healed him, and then they talked until daybreak, you know, some more, until he got ready to go on his boat. Okay, so that, that was just my little... A little humorous thing, you know, don't, you know, just give, give God his due time, okay? And especially on, on Sunday, you know, uh, an hour and a half is, you know, not all that bad. And I've been looking at my Spreaker outputs, uh, you know, most of our services from the start of the music to the end of the preaching is about 90 minutes, 98 minutes, uh, the longest one we had was actually three hours, but that was a time when they were praying for people. You know? And people, you know, when you're going to pray for people, you better be prepared to hang around. You know? And if, if, you don't, if you can't stay, you can't stay. But, you know, give people that want prayer the opportunity to get prayer and don't disparage them for, you know, because there are people that need prayer. And speaking of that, since I'm on Spreaker, uh, we have a new prayer email that uh, people can send in prayer requests for, and that's prayer at godswarroom.com. Prayer at godswarroom.com. And our, uh, our website for the church is godswarroom.com. So if you want to send in a prayer request, if you're listening to the program, or if you guys out there want to Test our test my email expertise. I I set that up. I have I actually have mail servers at my house. You know I don't I don't get mail from anywhere else. I get it. It actually when mail comes from the internet, it actually goes to my house where the post office is. I don't go through you know Yahoo or or whatever. God's War Room is my own domain, and it goes right to my house. <laughs> So anyway, prayer at godswarroom.com if you, if you have a prayer request. And, I, and I, uh, I'm telling people that, uh, you know, that, that we'll forward those prayer requests on to the, to the prayer people that, uh, that take time. And they'll take time. And they'll take time to, to pray for those people. So I guess that's all I have.
So I don't know. Is everybody's hearts and minds clear? I haven't beat you up, but maybe I gave you some good stuff to think about. All right. Any announcements or anything? The prayer group? Well, I don't know if pastors are going to be back or not. Because don't they usually have... Yeah. <laughs> My friend Ernie has been posting scripture... <laughs> In here, Psalms 100, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Ecclesiastes, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. And Matthew 18, 24, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among you. So, Anyway, go ahead. Okay, so this is a, a website that's set up for for CAS. Okay, all right. So uh, I will look. It's on. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, cool. Everybody, cool. All right, Father, we just thank you for. Uh, for getting us through this day. Thank, thanks for filling my mouth, Lord, because I, I sure wasn't sure what to say. I just wanted to take the time to admonish people to take the time to hang out with you and to receive your blessings and, and hear your voice, Father. And as we go today on our, uh, on our own paths, just uh, lead us and guide us. Show us people to talk to and to encourage them in the Lord. And uh, just give, her, give us more opportunity to realize that we do have time for you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Oop. Speaker folks, I'm going to close the program down. Oh, yes, I am.
We hope you have enjoyed today's worship service brought to you live from the Pillar of Fire Church in Marion, Illinois. Please join us again next week at 2 p.m. Central Time for our next service. Check out our website at www.godswarroom.com and have a blessed day.